Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hey guys, Zot here and welcome to another video. In today's guide we're going to be focusing on setting up your Fire Mage ready for patch 8.3 Arena. To make this video possible, we've collaborated with Wildcard Gaming's Mage Extraordinaire and BlizzCon runner-up Marrow. This is going to be including an update on talents, essences, Azerite choices, trinkets and the new corruption mechanic finishing it off by covering your rotation and playstyle inside of Arena. So to kick things off, let's begin with talents. Get a good baseline talent setup and discuss any adaptations that you will want to make depending on matchup and composition. Fire Mage is easy in the fact that your talents are for the most part set in stone. So we've got Fire Starter, Shimmer, Encounters Flow, Flame On, Ring of Frost, Living Bomb and Meteor. The only real deviation you would ever want to make is on the level 15 row. This primarily comes down a lot to personal preference. Marrow prefers to go with Firestarter. This is going to allow you to get your heating up procs a lot easier, allowing for a much stronger setup, and giving you some added damage outside of your setups. Whereas Pyromaniac is a little more RNG, and if you're lucky, can add a lot of damage to your burst rotation. Searian Touch, on the other hand, gives you a little more finishing power. If you find enemies consistently live in your setup, and you run in out of damage, this again is a fine pickup. Easy enough, now let's move on to PvP talents where there is a little bit more diversity, mainly depending on what composition you're playing. A good baseline though looks like this, although let's talk about why you take these talents and the different scenarios you would want to swap them around. Temporal Shield is a must whenever you know you're going to be the target, or at risk of being the target. So unless you for sure know what the enemy composition will be doing, then you're going to need this talent. Without the added survivability this talent provides, you'll find it incredibly hard to live, no matter what composition you're playing. Kleptomania is another very good talent pick that you'll want to have most of the time. There are tons of scenarios where this talent is great. You'll want it against every druid team, every mage team, and even against restoration shamans when you're looking to focus them. But if you're facing things like Mistweaver Monk Cleaves and a few other compositions where a guaranteed full purge on the enemy team isn't required, you can then look to swap this one out. Firestarter is Fire Mage's most consistent offensive PvP talent. This should be picked up whenever you're not going to get use out of Greater Pyroblast, as in your downtime when you're able to, you can look to reduce the cooldown of your combustion ready for that next setup. Okay, so I've already mentioned a few scenarios where these default talents should be swapped around. Now let's take a look at some of the other options. Greater Pyroblast is one of your best PvP talents if you can make use out of it. So think compositions with a lack of interrupts. Alternatively, Greater Pyroblast is a must in certain compositions. If you're playing with another caster, say for instance Destruction Warlock or even Shadow Priest, then having the threat of Greater Pyroblast is required, even if you're getting trained, as you'll just generally find a lot more opportunities to make use out of it. As to which talent to replace, Firestarter and Greater Pyroblast should never be played together. Alternatively, for those times where you don't need Klepto or Temporal, Tinder is a great offensive option to pair up with your Firestarter, reducing the cast time of your Fireball and increasing its damage. And our last talent that you could find use for is Flame Cannon. As with the Tinder Firestarter synergy, Flame Cannon benefits Greater Pyroblast heavily, increasing your damage and range when you're standing still. So again, if you're playing Greater Pyroblast and don't need either Temporal or Klepto, pick this talent up. Okay, so that's both our PvP and normal talents covered. Let's now move on to Essences, as with patch 8.3 we saw the release of some new ones. Major Essence wise, Mages have two main options, Breath of the Dying or Memory of Lucid Dreams. Breath of the Dying is good almost all of the time, it's great for setup compositions or when paired up with a melee, adding a lot of power to your goes, either buttering them up when used above 80% or executing them when below 20. Great pickup and one you'll find yourself using most of the time. Memory of Lucid Dreams is your all-in button, having a lot less consistent damage but a ton more burst. 
Primarily, you'll want this in one of two scenarios. Either you're playing a Caster Cleave with Greater Pyroblast, and you're looking to create a ton of pressure or score kills relatively solo. The other scenario is when you're looking to go through enemy defensive cooldowns or essentially winning a single setup. So if you're playing a Caster Cleave or looking to cheese, Memory of Lucid Dreams is the pick. There are a few changes to minor essences with patch 8.3, some new additions as well as a new slot with the level 75 neck. So now you can pick up three minor choices. Your first minor is going to be either Lucid or Breath of the Dying, whichever one you don't have selected as your major essence. So in this case, Lucid Dreams. The second minor is Conflict and Strife. This just adds a huge boost of versatility, making you more durable and deal more damage. And our final minor is Vision of Perfection. This in turn reduces the cooldown of your combustion, meaning you're going to be able to do a lot more consistent goes. Not to mention the cooldown of combustion will by default be offset to target's trinkets. Moving on, up next we've got gearing. In this section we're going to be covering stat priority, trinkets, azurite and also everybody's new favourite addition to the game, corruption. Starting with stat priority, nothing's changed. You still want haste and versatility above all else, with mastery and critical strike being far less valuable. Trinkets have become more and more important, with them now being an integral part of gearing. For Fire Mage, there is a few standout trinkets. First is the Forbidden Obsidian Claw. This trinket is basically the new Gladiator's Maledict, but better. If used at the right time, this trinket can make your setups incredibly potent, adding a huge amount of damage, a must-have for fire in all scenarios. Whereas another damage option if you don't need the added defense from a Battle Master is a Gladiator's Badge, giving you a huge bonus to your burst damage during a setup. And of course, you may find some uses for the new Gladiator's Spike Trinket, depending on your composition and strategy. As a right for fire is quite simple. You primarily want to focus on getting two traits. These are Blaster Master, which is hands down the best, and then your secondary trait Wildfire. You can easily obtain these from the new raid, with their shoulders dropping from the penultimate boss Carapace and the helm from the last boss Enzoff, which leaves us with Chest. For this slot, we recommend you use your Titanium Residue and gamble for the lower Betrayer's Vestments or Volatile Armin Duble. A good alternative if you're unable to get free Wildfire though is the new Raid trait Heart of Darkness. There is also one specific piece of gear as a Fire Mage that you're going to want to get your hands on, and that's the braces from Mechagon Workshop, the Hyper Fred Wrist Wraps. These braces are insane for fire. Using them after you've extinguished your fire blast charges will give you two more, allowing you to then continue your burst rotation during combustion. And then last up, we've got everybody's favorite love or hate corruption. Totally balanced, not RNG at all, and great fun. When it comes to corruption, Fire Mage has a few options. The best hands down right now though, are those that deal damage. Gushing Wounds is the best by far, with it having very high uptime, good damage and such low corruption cost. However though, due to this, you're going to need multiple pieces. That being said, if you're not one of the luckiest people alive with 6 gushing, then Infinite Stars is the next best thing. Additionally, the Mind Flay Tentacles from Twisted Appendage can be very good if you're lucky with RNG or have multiple on your team. Okay, so we can't all be lucky and have these damage procs. If you don't, then you should be on the lookout for passive stat increases to your favoured stats. So either Expedient or Versatile, which then just adds a nice chunk of versatility or haste. Now that we have our character set up and a good idea on what pieces of gear to equip, let's talk rotation. Rotation in PvP is always a tricky one, but for Fire Mage it can be separated into two main categories, downtime and burst. First of all, let's cover downtime. So this is any time you're not looking to burst an opponent. Essentially what you should be doing is one of two things. If you're playing Greater Pyroblast, then this is your downtime filler. Try to create pressure, get interrupts out of the way, or even butter up enemies ready for your next setup. Often landing one of these at a good time can result in a very potent setup or even a kill. Alternatively, if you're playing without Greater Pyroblast, then you should be looking to spam Fireball. This when paired up with our recommended talent build of both fire starters means your fireballs will be doing very good damage and in turn reducing the cooldown of your combustion, preparing you for that next setup. Okay, so now you're ready to burst. How do you go about it? To look to burst as fire, you're first going to want to have a heating up proc ready. Then you're going to want to drop a meteor, use combustion, fire blast, pyroblast, fire blast, 
Pyro Blast and just repeat. Then once you've expended your Fire Blast charges, you can pop your Hyper Fred Wrist Wraps and go again. If you're using Memory of Lucid Dreams as your major essence, then you'll want to pop this again after your Meteor. It's also worth noting that both Combustion and Fire Blast are off the GCD meaning you can utilize your burst rotation in a very short window. Fire is one of the strongest specs right now, bringing immense burst damage, decent sustained damage, great crowd control, good mobility, and even good defensive capabilities. Now let's take a look at their playstyle inside of Arena. Now you've got all this burst damage as a Fire Mage, but popping it at the wrong time or without any form of a setup is a mistake you'll often see lesser experienced mages doing. Ideally, before you want to burst, you need to do a few things. First is having the enemy target locked down if possible. So this is primarily when playing with a melee. So you could be waiting for your rogue to kidney shot, waiting for your warrior to storm bolt, or even your windwalker to leg sweep. This will keep the target locked down and ensure all of your spells land. Secondly is having some form of crowd control onto the enemy healer. So a sheep, counterspell or even crowd control from your team. This will make your setups create a lot more pressure and of course popping cooldowns without any form of CC on the healer will allow them to just in turn heal through the damage or trade out their own defensive cooldowns. Now in the scenario where you're looking to go healer, this still applies. You'll still want to look to crowd control but this time onto the DPS before you then pop your offensive cooldowns. This will then stop them peeling or even using externals like Anti-Magic Zone, Darkness or Void Shift to name a few. Which brings me nicely to our second playstyle, and that's securing crowd control. This often isn't as easy as it sounds, but there are a few things you can do to improve your chances at securing crowd control. First is dual schooling. What I mean by this is using your multiple schools of magic. You can look to cast a polymorph onto a healer. If you then get interrupted, go for a Dragon's Breath Ring of Frost, just making sure to utilize all three schools of magic to improve your chances of securing that crowd control. Another way to help you secure crowd control onto a healer is by first looking to crowd control the DPS beforehand. This is great as it can remove kicks and other form of interrupts out of the equation. So for instance, just sheep a DPS and then Dragon's Breath Ring of Frost a healer. The easiest way to secure crowd control though is working with your team. Having your teammates assist you by securing crowd control of their own. So for example, if you're playing with a paladin, he can look to Hammer of Justice the enemy healer, giving you a much easier time securing that polymorph. A very important part of your toolkit and playstyle as a mage is relying on Shimmer. This ability allows you to cast and blink at the same time without interrupting the spell cast. Utilizing this is very important as fire. You can Shimmer in conjunction with Polymorph to land crowd controls on healers. You can Shimmer at the end of a Greater Pyroblast to avoid interrupts and secure the cast. Or even use Shimmer as a way to kite enemies and reduce some of the damage that you take. Now we touched a little about this in your rotation. You should always be looking to make the most out of your downtime. So if you're great at Pyroblast, look to secure some casts. This can help to butter up enemies ready for your next setup and create a ton of pressure. Reducing some of the damage you take or peeling for the team can be also great use of your downtime between your setups. So looking to spam sheep the DPS, rooting them or just generally kiting. And again, if you've picked up fire starter, using fireball in your downtime will in turn reduce the cooldown of your combustion, meaning you're going to be able to do a big setup a lot sooner. And last up is playing defensive. Defensive play as a fire mage is very important. When you're not being aggressive, you need to support yourself and your team defensively. This can be looking to use your personal defensives, so making sure to use your barrier of cooldown, using temporal shield before you're about to take a big chunk of damage or have no mobility left. It's also vital that you use your two major defensives well. These are cauterize and ice block. Ideally, you never want to use them both at the same time unless it's necessary. What I mean by this is if your healer's stuck in crowd control and you know you're going to have to block, don't sit there and let your cauterize proc and just waste it. And it works the other way. If you cauterize, try to hold your block and use either temporal or have your healer try to save you. Looking to kite as much as possible and avoid damage with your Frost Nova and Shimmer is also key to playing defensive. Not to mention your biggest role and that's peeling for yourself and your team. This could be with Counterspell, Dragon's Breath, Nova, but more often than not looking to rotate polymorphs on the DPS in order to reduce some of the damage you and your team are taking. Okay then guys, that's going to be it for this 8.3 Fire Mage PvP guide. Thanks for watching and be sure to plus skill this video if you 
enjoyed. And if you do have any more questions, be sure to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.